Your Excellency, welcome back to CNBC. It's great to see you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the invitation to the ministry. Uh, you've called today a milestone day for the UAE. You've updated your NDC. What does it reflect? So, uh, yes, it's a milestone moment for us, Dan. Um, following the approval of the cabinet last week, uh, the UAE is raising its ambition even further uh, than our updated NDC last year. So we've raised it now to 40% emission reduction by 2030 compared to business as usual scenario. And this is a 9% improvement since last year. Uh, so it's a very proud moment for us. And of course, we don't stop there. We're going to continue um, our efforts. Uh, but right now, this is a moment that we can uh, say it's a milestone moment and it's a moment that we can celebrate as a nation because for us, this has been a country initiative, a country effort. Um, we've also gone a step further, Dan. Uh, the UAE is a, or categorized as a developing country, uh, but we've chosen to use the methodology of developing our NDC, um, the methodology that's followed by developed nations. Of course, this methodology is more complicated, uh, but the beauty here is it gives you more credibility because there's more accountability, there's more transparency, and you can actually track, or it's more easier to, to track as well. And for us doing this, um, not only because we're hosting the world at COP28, and we kind of, we want to walk the talk, uh, but it's also uh, the COP28 presidency has called out for countries or parties to actually raise their ambition, step up their efforts. And so it's been a response as well to that call. Um, and for us doing this uh, was a major milestone. And we're very happy of where we are today. So 40% is the goal. How will you walk the talk, to use your own words on yes. this? What's the implementation plan? So the implementation plan goes as follows. We announced our net zero uh, by 2050 uh, pathway last year at COP27. We've now updated our NDC, and this NDC is now fully aligned with the Paris Agreement. It's also aligned with our net zero pathway. And in a few months' time, we will be also announcing the implementation plan of our net zero pathway. So the NDCs symbolize already what we're going to be achieving by 2030. So those initiatives and policies are already taking effect and in action. Um, but for us, we try to look beyond that as well to try and um, make sure that our net zero by 2050 is also achieved. Of course, climate isn't a play alone sport. You need collective action here. How do you get the region on side to match or exceed the ambitions of the UAE and level up their own NDCs now? So we start first nationally. So we've created something called the National Dialogues for Climate Ambition, NDCA. And uh, with that, we every month we do these dialogues with the private sector, with the, especially the hard to abate sectors. So we've had dialogues with the cement sector, the waste sector, the finance sector, and we've been doing this uh, on a month to month basis. And so this kind of alignment and commitment that we're getting on a national level has now been reflected as well in our NDCs and taking that now to the region. We're kind of telling them uh, some of our tools that we're using and basically, yeah, pushing them as well to uh, raise their ambitions because at the end of the day, we want to ensure that when countries come to the UAE, it's not only about the UAE, but it's about the region as a whole and what we're doing and how committed we are in the climate uh, agenda. So we've seen an improvement in the NDC, but I want you to put this into context for us because we're also seeing ADNOC, the national oil company here, investing significantly over the next few years into its own fossil fuel production capacity. So how is that new fossil fuel investment consistent with these new targets? So when we develop NDCs, we cut across all sectors and the oil and gas sector is of course included in our NDC. And uh, what happens is you look down at sectoral levels and now the new NDC actually looks at sectoral targets as well. So the oil and gas uh, sector has its own target uh, by 2030. And what we need to do is ensure that we are taking an approach that is pro-climate and pro-growth. Um, so um, as you probably know, last week the UAE also announced its updated energy strategy. Um, and with that, it's actually stepping up its game on uh, uh, making sure we have three times as more renewable energy as we do now by 2030. 
Uh, we're also ensuring that the, um, the energy mix consists of at least 30% uh, of clean um, capacity or installed clean capacity by 2031, and then increasing that to 35% um, uh, by 2035. Uh, we're also investing about $54 billion into the space of renewables. Um, with that as well, up, up, upgrading or enhancing as well our hydrogen as production because we really want to become a uh, producer and low carbon exporter of, of hydrogen. On top of that, we're also increasing our energy um, consumption efficiencies to reach up to 45%. Um, and also making sure that we're decarbonizing uh, the existing energy systems. Mm. Will the UAE support a phase out of fossil fuels at COP28? So our target right now is to phase down. We still believe that oil and gas will have a role to play in the energy mix of the world. Um, and for us, it really needs to be emphasized that the renewable energy space needs to be phased up and accelerated as fast as possible to reach to a level where you can say, now we can switch. And that's when you can start talking about phasing out. So for us right now, the world is not ready for us to switch the switch and go to the clean and renewable space. So oil and gas will still have a role to play and that's why we talk about phasing down and decarbonizing. But as soon as the renewable energy space reaches to a level where it takes on base loads, where it's able to carry itself a little bit, that's when you can start talking about phasing out fossil fuels. Do you think the reputation of the UAE has been impacted by the fact that we do have the CEO of a major fossil fuel producer in charge of the COP28 presidency? Yeah. I smile because this is a question that, that we get quite often. I think what people um, should realize, uh, first of all, they always focus as, as the persona of Sultan Najabar being the CEO of ADNOC. Um, you need to also know that he is the chairman of Mazdar, which is our renewable energy uh, company, which is today one of the top investors in the renewable energy space. And actually Mazdar has contributed greatly to the um, development and the growth of the UAE in this space. And so he was actually put in ADNOC to transform, to decarbonize ADNOC, and also to future-proof it. Now, when we look at him as a person um, at the COP28 president seat, um, we feel he is the right man for the job because he is a businessman, because he has, I think, over a decade of climate diplomacy. Uh, he has a great vast network and he's able to get the job done. And I think if we look at the past 27 COPs that we've had, we need to do things differently. We need to course correct. We need to do a big game changer in this because the house is on fire, basically. And so it's really important, I think, that, and I'd love to see the media put more attention on the bigger picture, on the challenges we have, on the solutions we need to scale up, than always putting uh, or focusing on the persona themselves. I think it's important to say, will he get the job done? And I believe he will. And COP is only a few months away now, so how do you raise the ambition and level up from this point on as we head into this really critical end of year meeting? Well, we're so excited, Dan. We're, we're excited, I think anxious, excited, but um, this is really an opportunity. We believe um, the UAE is well known as a bridge builder. The UAE is well known for solutions. Uh, we, we like to take a positive approach to things and we really want to bring hope back into the process. And so I believe convening uh, the Global North with the Global South, East and West to the UAE, I think we've got a great opportunity because we really want this to be an all-inclusive COP. We want this to be a COP of solutions. Um, we're going to have the first global stock take. This is going to tell us where we are. We know it's not going to look good, but it's also going to give us information um, in where are the areas we need to put more focus on and we need to accelerate more. And I think everybody should know that we all have a role to play in this, not just as governments, private sector, but as individuals. We all uh, are pulling uh, on our global system in a way, and we need to reflect a little bit on our behavior um, and, and our everyday lives to see, are we also doing our part in this as well? And I think COP28 
there's the negotiation side, which happens, of course, but there's also the exciting green zone side where we're going to have so many innovations. Uh, we're going to, I mean, it's, it's a huge green zone uh, that we're going to have right next to the blue zone, by the way, not far apart. Um, and so with this, we're really wanting to make sure that there's so much interconnection, that there's the inclusivity part. And we hope with that we can really course correct because uh, our planet needs that. Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for having me.